now we have only one module left selecting the cloud services okay yeah. so in this particular domain we'll discuss about the enabling the security strategy things to look in the cloud service provider what is secas okay advantages and everything and basically a summary that's all okay? okay so basically this will cover the domain 7 domain 8 and domain 14 the csa guidance okay so basically what happens is we have a lot of questions okay in this domain it's a very small one we have a lot of questions which will apply equally to all the providers regardless of what the flavor of IaaS or pass or sas they are selling these questions are applicable to everyone is it clear okay. in any yeah. in any cloud provider any cloud type of cloud services got it so enabling the security strategy the goal of this entire module what happens is what does the cloud provider okay what does the cloud provider do to achieve my the level of for my like for example let's say what does the cloud provider do to achieve the level of security for me or my company or my data or what we need okay so basically okay. once you get the proper answer how to get the answer you will see the ccm document you will have a ciit document you have you see the compliance mm -hmm. report see this you might get the answer for this mm -hmm. so basically see this i click on amazon compliance so here i'll take azure compliance So you can go through the compliance reports and everything basically you have to go through the compliance reports and everything and see see the compliance programs compliance process yes. you can go to the report you can go through the ancpa report so basically go through all this but one more thing okay aws cai document so see this this is basically a document by aws okay they will uh -huh. answer so like the same way you have azure also so by okay. seeing this document, you know what all things are provided by them you have a clarity is it clear that's it so that's the first thing okay the second thing is basically the second thing is okay or in other words we can say okay or in other words basically what we can say is we can use it as okay what do you do or what do i have to do so basically what all responsibilities is basically a part of the cloud service provider see this is the most important thing one 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 of my students asked is it mandatory for us to know the things provided by the cloud service provider and what all things you have to do in every service i say yes mm -hmm. In any service, if you want to work in the cloud, let's say in AWS or Azure or Google or any cloud platform, any service mm -hmm. you're taking, the first thing you will you must understand is the responsibility. Let's say mm -hmm. in this particular service, I am responsible for this this task. The, mm -hmm. That kind of cloud service provider will do this. If I don't know, if I don't know the demarcation point of the separation mm -hmm. between these two things, I must not be able to work on that. Guarantee, hundred percent sure. Mm -hmm. You get me right? So see, mm -hmm. if I if I think that okay, this is managed by a cloud service provider. If I don't have a clarity, I'll be affected. So make sure yep. you must have a clarity on all these things, right? Okay. The next one, okay, and definitely the slide will uh, like it, it will pretty much speak for itself. So basically, see, there is a word called as gap analysis. So mm -hmm. let's say, for example, this is this is my requirement. This is my requirement. This is what they can provide. This minus this is my gap. That means that I want to have some 10 requirements. They can provide only three. So the rest is a gap. So where there is a perceived gap in the requirements, does the vendor have some way to enable you as the customer to bridge the gap? Or do I have to use some third party solution for that? That must be considered mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. And definitely we have a lot of definitely when you go to a cloud service provider, you have to go through a lot of standards. Like for example, ISO 27001 secured ISMS. We have SOC reports. Then you have uh, this compliance, other compliance. So basically, go through all these. See, this is the only way you can audit them, right? There's no yeah. way you can go to the premise and do that, right? That's it. See this. So, which standard you're using doesn't matter. Don't forget. Which standard you're using, ISO or SAS or whatever it is, which standard you're using, that doesn't mm -hmm. matter. What matters mm -hmm. is about your scope and what is actually tested and what all things you need. Is it clear? And there's one more thing. So uh, now, now I told you, uh, Varun, I pass CCSK. I've just recertified my CCSK to a new version. Why? Because basically, if I want to take the new version of CCSK, I have to make sure it's certified. There is a current certification. There is a word called as current certification, right? So what I need, I need current certification. In the in the case of, yep. it's also like what is it? In the case of cloud provider, also they, they are giving me. They say that okay, they have SOC, SOC reports. They have PCDSS compliance. See that mm -hmm. it is current. Let's say I'm yeah. they are telling me that I had this I had this particular certification two years back. That is not a valid thing. There must be a current yeah. report. Yep. Yeah. So and don't forget there is one more word I want to always tell you to. And whenever you get time, make sure you go through this particular thing. Okay. There is a word called mm -hmm. as zero trust model. Guarantee thing you have mm -hmm. to read. Okay. For any courses you study from now on, this is mandatory. Zero trust model. 
only one i have i can summarize the answer in only one word okay don't assume or trust verify mm -hmm. so things to look for a cloud provider so these are the factors which you can basically look for a cloud service provider so like for example the ability to inspect the or provider basically how much they are giving me option to inspect the cloud service provider okay and see i'll, I'll give you some easy sort of question from this see this i have made a document like this see this so the cloud service mm -hmm. provider must have a proper well-defined policy and processes and there must be proper mm -hmm. documented regular testing from a third party also and see the success rates so i'll tell you basically what happens is in the case of disaster can what is business continuity the ability to continue operation in case of a disaster that's what we call as business continuity that means let's mm -hmm. say i have a data center here okay primary data center this is my backup data center so what happens is so currently my customers are selling me from this data center one okay so what i'm telling now is what i'm telling now is what if my data center goes down if my data center one mm -hmm. goes down i have to make sure my operation will continue my business can operate continuously from data center two is mm -hmm. it clear mm -hmm. that is what you call as business continuity and disaster recovery means how much time or effort it takes basically for me to bring back the primary data center. that's what you call as disaster recovery there must be a proper well-defined process for that it must be documented it must be tested so there is two words here rto rpo recovery time objective recovery point objective what is the difference between rto rpo let's say rto means how much time it will take for me to bring something back to operation it's what you call as rto, RTO. clear yeah. and rpo means how much data i'll tell you let's say for example i say that uh, rpo is three hours for a database that means that my database will be taken the backup every three hours okay mm -hmm. let's say i took a backup now after some time uh, the database crashed so i can i mm -hmm. can suffer the data loss from the last three hours that's what you call as rpo how much data i am afford to lose is it clear how much data i am yeah. okay to lose okay so lesser lesser rpo more cost got it and definitely there must be proper availability there must be proper availability and it must be enforced in the SLA. It's mandatory to basically explain the availability factor. Why? Because basically availability. So when they guarantee you some, see, there is a there is a huge difference between uptime and availability. Tell me what is the difference between uptime and availability? So I'm telling you that 99.99 percent uptime. Okay, that means so what is the difference between uptime and availability? Let's say for example, I have a server now. Okay, a server. Mm -hmm. So the observer is basically up and running everything is everything is fine the observer everything is up and running the server started automatically mm -hmm. the service started everything is working fine that mm -hmm. means the server is up and running got it yep but the point here is availability means the server is up and running but it is not serving the page the customers are not able to get the page that is unavailable is it clear so okay availability is from the service point of view uptime is in the hardware point of view got it the difference perfect bro so then then there must be a proper configuration management and patch management process see i'll tell you patch management means uh like in the cloud provider also there must be a proper standard for patching i'll tell you why see how the how does the vendor will handle the patching systems like basically see what is the primary thing when i am doing patching i have test the patches right i, I have two words first one is applicability and testing so applicability i'll tell you that means that let's say for example in my company i have 100 computers 50 from hp and 50 from dell so what happens is basically if there is a patch released for the dell laptop or dell computer mm -hmm. is it applicable for hp no right why because basically that patch is developed for dell laptop so it's not for hp right. laptop right so what happens is basically right. in this case okay in this case what happens is i have to make sure the patch is applicable for me that is the first thing second one is i have to test that is it clear and that's very very important actually okay and the next one is security in the development process so basically what all things you are basically providing in the development process and operation process see this threat modeling coding guidelines so basically mm -hmm. they are providing a lot of tools for that okay so mm -hmm. what all things they are providing me effectively for secure operations and everything so like for example how how they are planning the backups how they are planning the business continuity and uh, how that can you do versioning so like this mm -hmm. we have to basically go through a lot of things to see if the cloud service provider is basically giving me security for development operation okay 
and there must be a proper apis also apis is very okay. important like basically what happens is uh like you have to verify the api uh, the apis must be so secure why because if the api is compromised that means the complete application can be compromised so we have a lot of documents which can support you on this thing okay so for all these okay. queries to the cloud service provider okay for all these queries to the cloud service provider there must be some kind okay there must be some kind of uh, they must have answered this so basically for the answers the best one is the ccm document and the caiq okay this one okay this is super important okay don't forget okay and and just remember this word that means that they are giving you that but basically you have to go to that and you have to verify if that is enough for you and otherwise you can add your questions also no problem clear so selecting a cloud service provider is something which is very important like for example the cloud provider see the whole thing is nowadays the cloud providers are giving you all the same services but the difference is see how much or which one is the most flexible for you in case of cost in case of features in case of availability in case of compliance so basically see which one is the best one for you okay most important you should know is what you are getting that is a primary thing is and before you sign up for a service you must know what you are getting got it so now we'll, and a few only a few more slides now we'll discuss about the secas security as a service okay the same thing the same thing is secas is nothing like it's a, it's a new it's a very old thing but basically people are hearing this word now only okay that's it so secas yeah. is basically a extension of the current or existing security controls like for example so basically uh, we will get a lot of uh, flexibility in having a cloud based console like for example uh, the service the service cloud service provider has some accountability for security like uh, the staffing challenges the hardware and everything they will take care okay see even if we have a complete secas architecture we have to make sure we basically have a proper uh, visibility and uh, of the technology which is involved in the platform otherwise what happens is we will not be able to have work it effectively okay that's it now let's discuss about the secas features okay basically secas mm -hmm. can help me a lot like basically what is what do you mean by secas like i think most people nowadays know this okay so the whole thing is okay uh, when i say the word secas okay what what is secas tell me basically what it means as secas we can say that it's a kind of cloud delivery model like for example let's say when we are outsourcing the cyber security services like uh, saas and all basically in the saas perspective this is more of to a it's a cloud delivery model what happens is basically so the secas will provide the security services on a subscription basis hosted by the cloud service provider just let me show you show an example secas mm -hmm. on aws no in, even aws is also providing you a lot of services like basically what happens is aws also when you talk about the, see i'll show you a document here please wait so the aws reunion see this this is basically a secas document actually so okay. how how it works how it works basically i'll just share this document also so, okay see this okay no problem so i'll just tell you first and then i'll explain so basically what i when i talk yeah. about the word called a secas understand that it's a cloud computing model which will basically help me to get the uh, security services over the internet like by the cloud service providers and and as we discussed we have only three models ias pass and saas so secas mm -hmm. is a part of SaaS. That means security. They are providing me security as a service, like for a monthly subscription. Can give me a lot of things. Like basically, the cost can be very much cheap. Why? Why? Because basically, it's a service that they're providing, so I don't have to buy any devices. So we have very reduced cost. I don't have to purchase license and all. And the management also can be very flexible. Why? Because they are giving me a lot of predefined options, the updates and everything can be automatic for that. So basically, it is more effective, right? So when I talk about yeah. the word called as secas, okay. When I talk about the word called as secas, understand that. When I talk about the word called as secas, understand that it is having a lot of advantages. Okay, it is having a lot of advantages. The primary thing is, okay. See, the first thing that is resource pooling. Basically, in the secas, and talk about secas, resource pooling cannot be focused or forget. Why? Because basically, it will help me to utilize services better. Like for example, basically, what happens is the cloud service provider is basically sharing the infrastructure with many customers. Okay, so what advantage? Yeah. So as they are sharing the complete multiple customers, we can get a lot of savings. Like if, instead of mm -hmm. I going through the car, if I take some uh, like metro rail or something like, uh, what happens? I can save my money, right? Even if definitely there is a huge rush and all, but we save a lot of money. And the second one is yeah. resource sharing. So resource sharing means what? Like for example, let's say I can basically share. Like for example, say I can share 
uh, security process between, between the customer and the cloud service provider. So basically what happens is the more the data and organization has access to the deeper the analysis can be done in the cloud platform. Okay, so Secas provides okay Secas providers have access to all the data of all the customers. So but the only thing is okay, they can post and post an en encryption or but in the Secas perspective mm -hmm. the customers or the basically the cloud service providers have data access. Okay, and definitely what happens as we have resource pooling Secas can build me a complete scenario which is basically more cost effective. See, this is a very, very important thing. Why? Because so this word is super important. So reputation, let's say, for example, so the you remember the bank example I told you from the bank example. I told you even if the cloud providers do something wrong, you are accountable, right? Bank is accountable, right? So to be clear, organizations cannot outsource the accountability. Whatever things happen, if I am serving something to my customers, I cannot outsource my accountability. Is it clear? So someone of the internal team is also basically my internal team is ultimately responsible for protecting the privacy and intellectual property and everything and regardless of how many seconds basically it's my responsibility only okay yeah. there must be a proper policy generation there must be proper mechanism for communication and everything okay that's it